I'll be talking about testing today and on Sunday. And I won't be talking about Joomla. I know pretty, uh, uh, pretty small, pretty little things about Joomla. And, uh, uh, but testing is something uh, uh, general. Testing is something that every community should take into account. If you develop a product, testing is an essential thing. Uh, no matter if it's e-commerce, no matter if it's a website, web application, testing is really important. And when it's important, how and where, well, I'll talk about it. So uh, I'm from Ukraine. Uh, as I said, uh, that it's first time in, in Europe, in, in European U Union. I like traveling, uh, sometimes in this extreme ways on train, uh, on top of a train. And uh, like, uh, I like to develop uh, open source products like Conception, which is used by the Joomla testing team, and uh, other open source products which maybe you heard like Robo, Aspect Mock, and others. So, um, yes, I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I'm traveling uh, by conferences, I'm talking about testing, and uh, it's really an interesting question, why do developers should care about testing? So, uh, uh, we have actually two kinds of testing. It's manual, which is done by professional QAs, uh, something like monkey testing. So uh, those guys uh, are uh, just uh, rep trying to do the things before the client does. So if the site fails, they would know it be before the actual users will find out. But when they are uh, repeating the stuff regularly and re regularly, it's a good idea to automate their work. So uh, uh, sure, we won't fire the QA guys who are doing uh, manual testing. Manual testing is more about exploring system, uh, finding new issues. And automatic testing uh, is just like a s uh, saving. It's we just making the system snapshot, a verified snapshot. So. Uh, all the typical scenarios for uh, in in this uh, for this system in this very moment of time is uh, uh, are successful. That's uh, what we are trying to do with automated testing. Uh, we are defining functionality in current peri period of time. So, if someone commits uh, tomorrow, uh, we will uh, rerun our tests and we will see if this commit broke a build or not. And uh, we, are test we are doing testing from inside and outside. Uh, but before we going to, to, uh, to uh, before I'm going to answer what is inside testing and outside testing, there are options where you don't need to write tests. So when your project is uh, this one one time project, you are just built a site. Your client is happy, okay, it will work for years and uh, no changes uh, will be there. So you, you don't need automated testing. You, you will just click one time before uh, uh, sending you this project, you get your money, you are happy. Uh, when, uh, when no one cares about the quality of your product, <laughs> it's, it's, it happens, it happens especially in uh, small, really agile teams <laughs> that, are, uh, that are taking too, too much uh, orders and they have too few developers, too low prices and so on. And in this case, you, you won't write tests uh, either, but w if you are not in that kind of company and you are, quality is your priority, you will need tests. And as I said, tests, uh, uh, we should test the system from the inside and outside. And let's, uh, there is a metaphor for this, is a, is a box. So our system is like this kind of box. And our client is a, a man that kind of, uh, comes, is there and tries to grab a, let's say, chocolate from that box. And uh, we are selling this box as a chocolate machine, yes? and. Uh, what the client trying to get uh, uh, is uh, uh, one piece of chocolate from it. Uh, but we need to test uh, that the uh, box inside is working as really as a chocolate factory, that it can produce the chocolates. And we should test that a uh, user can get that chocolate. It's, if there was no that hole in this box, he, uh, he, couldn't, uh, he couldn't get chocolate, but the factory will uh, work uh, perfectly. And uh, if we won't test the system inside, we can uh, just put some chocolates in it 
and, and sell it uh, without a real, a real factory. Uh, so uh, we need two kinds of testing. So with user interface, this call is user interface, and with in internal te tests, which will uh, test the reliability in this, in the, of the internal system. Uh, so uh, in uh, testing, it's called black box testing and white box testing. So black box, yes, we know nothing about the system, how it works. We just know about the interface it provides. It's a whole <coughs> in this case of our box. And white box testing, where we are inside of the box and we are testing. So uh, this, uh, uh, this here we come to the idea of uh, unit testing and acceptance testing. And it's um, uh, some confusion because people do mix all the kind of testing into unit testing. So unit testing is only internal testing. But uh, you can't uh, say that your system works for sure if you are not testing it from the outer part. So if you are not testing the interface. So we need both acceptance and unit or integration test. Uh, let's go deeper and see all the levels of testing. So uh, we uh, are going from here is outside, inside. So we can go from um, outside it's, and it's, it's acceptance testing. In, in, in case of website, it's um, testing inside a real browser. Firefox, Chrome, uh, whatever. So we are trying to um, do some basic stuff, or more complex stuff, uh, which uh, client can, can make. So login, re register, uh, create some some articles, posts, um, uh, do shopping. Uh, everything is, this is done uh, with a real browser, with a real run web, web server, with uh, some kind of real database. Uh, when we uh, go down, to, uh, we are trying to, uh, mm, the, bad the bad part about this kind of testing is that it may be some slow, it's really hard to set up. And uh, there are corner cases with it, and we uh, may go down to functional testing. So we are trying to verify the sound, uh, but uh, we are trying to uh, use uh, some internals uh, of that we already know. Uh, so we are not uh, create doing all the stuff with uh, user interface. We can uh, do the we can uh, do the direct database calls instead of. Uh, uh, doing all this uh, from a web browser. So functional testing is like a mix of internal testing and outer testing. Uh, it's uh, really better explained if we will, will uh, look into frameworks like Laravel, Symfony and so on. They have a uh, functional testing integrated into it. Uh, but probably this term won't be applied to Joomla, so I, I will not uh, go deeper into it. Integration testing is uh, when, we te uh, when we split our system into components, it's, uh, it's internal uh, uh, testing. Uh, we split our system into components and we test the component at uh, whole. Uh, so if uh, uh, admin system uh, or user rating system works, uh, does uh, command system works, and uh, we test uh, those components. And uh, in, on the unit level, we test uh, just one class, uh, just simple uh, atomic uh, some, something which is in PHP class. And uh, this pyramid, uh, you see, is a um, uh, uh, good practice about how much of the tests you need in a system. So you, you need to have lots of unit tests. Uh, uh, less integration and few UI tests. So you need to test uh, the system more from the internal side and spend less time writing UI tests. If you don't do the internal testing, you will have to write more UI stuff. And there is uh, actually, um, as I say, uh, 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 such bad parts of uh, acceptance testing uh, which, uh, which doesn't allow us to uh, test e everything this way. So at first we are dealing with user interface. If we can't do something with user interface, then okay, we can't test it in a certain way. Uh, we are doing it uh, as the user does. Uh, we are using real browser, real web server, real database. So every time you run, run the test, you will need everything that to set up. 
And the good part of it that no, it doesn't know of running backend. Any application on can be tested this way. Uh, so uh, uh, functional testing uh, is about emulating all those uh, user interactions uh, with maybe HTTP requests, which may be with uh, framework uh, um, uh, abstract systems. And uh, they are pretty much similar, but they don't use real web server and don't use real browser. So if we, uh, uh, we just need to test functionality, not the user interface, functional tests is what we need. Uh, yeah, I'm repeating what I said about integration tests. So, uh, yeah, one point I missed about integration tests is that if uh, our component is using external system like database, file system, and so on, it's okay. But uh, uh, in unit tests, uh, countries, they are really strict to what are we testing. We are testing one single code piece, atomic code piece, in total isolation. So if our command uh, service is uh, uh, works with database, okay, we, we need to mock the database provider. If we uh, do, uh, if it if it connects to other class, we should mock this class. Uh, so unit tests are really really complex, and um, all the um, all the articles of uh, testing in PHP they are somehow related to unit testing. When you are uh, coming to unit test, you understand it's too complex, and you don't need to, you don't have time to uh, get it or learn it. And okay, we will drop it. And the, okay, it's it may work for new project. It uh, unit tests are important in uh, uh, projects which uh, start with uh, modern best practices. But if you can try to unit tests, okay, you, you can write integration, no matter how good you test that feature. So uh, uh, the hardest thing about unit testing is to isolate class from others. If you are developing class with uh, solid uh, principles, so uh, we um, exactly know what dependencies of class, uh, class we use, maybe we are uh, developing in, in TDD, then it won't be a problem for us. But in another case, we will need to create uh, mocks and stops, uh, so-called test doubles, to replace the real dependencies with fake ones. And this uh, mocking st approach is highly used in PHP spec. I'll uh, tell about it later. Uh, but actually, in real life, it shouldn't be overused, as I think of it. Uh, because uh, it just proves that your class works in isolation, but it don't prove anything else. So if you are you know, take too much attention to uh, you know, testing classes in isolation, you, you won't be uh, this that won't tell you anything about uh, working the system in in a whole. And uh, where test doubles do really work and they are important, it's when you are testing external APIs. Twitter, uh, Stripe, uh, PayPal, or anything else, uh, external server. Uh, so when you're, you're checking your cart, uh, your checkout process, you shouldn't uh, do the call to real uh, PayPal. Yeah, you, you can mock it. And that's why if you have PayPal ser service, you are replacing it with, with, with fake ones. And then you are testing that your functionality works, and okay, you can trust PayPal; it, it will work. Uh, it's it's not a matter of your <laughs> business. Uh, so, um, what do we need for testing? So, uh, for second testing, we need all those stuff: browsers, uh, Selenium, uh, web server, database. Uh, for functional integration, we need all the things that application needs internally. Probably it's a database, it may be caching systems. Anything else? Uh, unit tests are considered the most fastest ones. They are, as I said, they are totally isolated, so you need nothing more than PHP. And it is, that's why unit tests may be uh, considered simplest. If you are testing some one function, it, it may be simplest, but in real products, they aren't. And uh, let's look into uh, this uh, you know, ch chart, uh, into this pair parameter again. So, when we go uh, from the top, from the UI testing, uh, we see that uh, our test execution stability uh, lowers. So uh, the, 
A certain uh, tests with real browser are really unstable sometimes because they uh, rely on browser, Selenium, sometimes you don't, uh, connection is lost, some, sometimes page is not rendered uh, as fast as it, as it expected and uh, tests do fail because of uh, some unpredictable things. But uh, if, the, if test is uh, written in unit level, it's totally isolated, there's uh, no external uh, things that can I interact with tests and interfere with it and break it. So unit tests are mo the most stable. Uh, but uh, the unit te uh, tests are, uh, are really, f they, they do change really fast because all, all internal development ha happens on unit level. So one day you are using this class, next day you are dropping it. And uh, the acceptance tests uh, are the most stable to change. So because whenever you work with one interface, you can change the system, everything in the system. You can move from WordPress to Joomla, and the acceptance tests would pass because they are written the, the way that they don't know anything about what is behind. Uh, speed. Our acceptance tests are the slowest. Yeah. Yes, as I said, because of they, they take too much uh, dependencies. Uh, they grant you the most coverage, because uh, uh, one simple test can test uh, all, the, all the components of the system. They uh, won't test uh, all the features of the system, uh, but uh, they w uh, uh, it's pretty uh, simple to start with a second test to grant more cover. So you just write one test and it will prove that your uh, front page works, that your login page works. And if, if you will do it from uh, the unit testing perspective, you will need uh, three or five or six uh, tests to be written just to test that uh, login page works. And uh, yes, that's, that's what about preciseness. That uh, on unit and integration level, we can uh, check that exact, exact this feature box. So um, let's say we have a um, discount, uh, discount and uh, coupon code goes to every uh, tenth visitor of, uh, of our site. Uh, we can't do testing of this scenario from the uh, user's perspective because we, it, it involves tenth user. Uh, 10 users, and we uh, we can't create all the users on. Uh, it's it, it, it's not a good idea, and that's why we are doing this uh, on integration side. So we are uh, creating in the database 10 users, and we are checking that 10 uh, from 10 user receives a discount coupon for shopping. And that's uh, what I mean by precise, is that with unit testing, integration testing, we can uh, test exactly what we, uh, uh, what we need, ex ex the exact feature of it. And all the tests should be readable, easy to write, maintain, and to work with. Uh, so what do we have in PHP to work with, uh, to do testing? So we have PHP unit. Who uses PHP unit? Okay, <laughs> because if you don't, it's, it's really strange because uh, PHP unit uses everyone in PHP, it's standard. Uh, the bad part of PHP unit is that it is standard for too long time and like PHP, it, uh, it, it got all the um, changes from all the years and it's really, it becomes bloated with all this feature. It's, it's, Really, lots of deprecated stuff in it, and uh, but it 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 works well. It works well for all major frameworks, or for, for internal tests of many CMS systems, and uh, everyone uses it actually. So uh, uh, next thing is PHP spec. Uh, this is kind of new hipster tool. So uh, for anyone who uh, believe in TDD. Who who, who heard of TDD? Okay, who uses TDD? Okay, so uh, PHP spec is not actually, not actually a testing tool. It's a, a tool that will teach you how to do TDD. If you are interested in this topic, uh, take a look at it, and it will uh, uh, teach you how to write classes in, a, in this manner. So uh, you are describing the class uh, 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 you are writing specification for that class, 
PHP spec generates, generates you uh, according to PSF standards a boilerplate code for it. You are writing your tests, then you are writing your code. That uh, uh, you, you are making this test pass, and this is how development actually works. So PHP spec is uh, interesting, some kind of crazy stuff. Uh, I, if you are interested, I will tell you more about it. Uh, but it, it's not about testing in whole. It's about unit testing only. It's about uh, doing unit testing from the TDD perspective. You write tests first and code after. And uh, there is BHAT. Uh, BHAT is a uh, behavior driven framework for about uh, four years, I think. And they started uh, by porting Cucumber, a really popular framework from uh, Ruby, uh, which allows to execute uh, tests uh, written as a user stories from. So if you know the agile and, the, uh, and user stories from agile, if we uh, write down all user stories but and make them executed, they will become tests. So it's about acceptance testing, it's about mm, uh, writing tests uh, with a natural language. So you can write in English, in Spanish, in whatever you like, and it will be executed. And that's, like, that's kind of all. Cool. And there is conception. Conception is, uh, okay, let's talk, a pirate that tries to get, grab all the interesting stuff from others. So uh, conception uses PHP unit. Conception now has uh, a support for running tests, uh, writing in natural language. And actually, it's not about grabbing the stuff, but also about sharing the stuff. So uh, we all face the same problem in writing tests. So uh, we all have uh, the similar issues. And conception just utilizes all the uh, those problems, tries to solve it in the most general way, so uh, everyone could use it. And it provides you the ability to write acceptance, functional, unit, and integration tests. So, uh, everything in one box. Uh, so uh, when you choose, after you choose uh, the testing framework you will use for uh, for your work, uh, you will need uh, some kind of uh, bot uh, that will uh, uh, automatically uh, run this test because developers are lazy. When you when there are some when there are much tests. Uh, uh, you won't run it, they will take some time, maybe 5 minutes, maybe 10, maybe 20, and it's really um, hard to uh, execute them after each commit. And there is uh, a system called Continuous Integration Server that will run all the st tests for you every time. It's, it's really flexible because uh, when there is a team working on one project, uh, each, uh, uh, it will run tests for each commit for each uh, member. So, if uh, you see the test uh, I'm passing for this com commit, you, are, you can quickly see who's blamed for that. So uh, actually, the better practice is that uh, everyone on the team just makes a pull request to a project, and uh, if test, if this pull request isn't uh, this pass a test, this pull request is not accepted, etc. This way, we are. Uh, uh, we are sure that uh, master is always stable, that we don't accept any code that uh, doesn't, uh, uh, isn't covered with test and that we don't accept anything that uh, breaks the test. And uh, when we it comes to continuous integration server, well, that's too much of them. And uh, actually the most popular one is Jenkins, it's a self-hosted system. Uh, there is Travis, uh, which is uh, really uh, cool for open source project, and lots of them. So they're, they're self-hosted, they are CI as a service, and it's up to you what uh, what to choose. Um, I, I can I can tell you depends on your needs, uh, but if to narrow the list, uh, to to my point of view. Travis is the simplest, uh, but it, it's overpriced somehow. It, uh, uh, it tests all the GitHub projects, and you, you understand how much the open source libraries does the test, and so it takes uh, some good money for testing uh, private products. Uh, Jenkins is something that is uh, regularly uh, in installed in, uh, in companies. 
because it's free, it's uh, self-hosted, it helped on thousands of plugins. Uh, I'll tell you um, in my next uh, talk about setting up Jenkins for power testing. And uh, we have GitLab CI, we have uh, PHP CI, Team City is really trending too. So just uh, do a research and select what you like the most. And uh, so how do we start testing? Uh, there is a test structure. So we need to define the condition of, uh, of a test. So this uh, things that we are taking as an assumption, initial uh, system state, then we do some actions that may break the functionality and we do assert assertions that we, we are uh, uh, checking this, uh, that these values are uh, set. Uh, so for unit and integration tests, uh, you can start with picking isolated code piece. If you have some simple component or some uh, uh, since it isn't uh, bloated with uh, PHP functions and dependencies. You can just pick it, uh, write a test for it, and uh, you, you just check that, uh, let's say, for mar is that markdown parser works uh, ok with just providing it with uh, markdown samples and getting uh, valid HTML outputs. Uh, with, uh, but PHP Union doesn't provide you anything for doing uh, acceptance testing. Uh, it does actually, but it's pretty bad. So uh, it's better to start with conception. So uh, in this case, we are writing a test as a scenario. I am uh, a regular user, I'm, I open a web page, I want to see on this page, uh, you are welcome. Yes, and this, uh, uh, this test is, is executed in a real browser. Uh, what do we do if we have already application <coughs> and it's not tested at all? So, uh, is, it your, is this your case? Yes, interested. So you have a legacy application with no tests written and you want to start? Yes. Uh, so, uh, um, my suggestion is that you start with a acceptance test. So a certain says don't care of internal code, say, say you are just uh, writing all user uh, scenarios. So if you have your commerce system, you should uh, write uh, tests for uh, checking out products, adding products, uh, searching products, and so on. So, and uh, once you are done, once you uh, stabilize the system with tests, you can ref uh, start refactoring the code. If uh, at one point uh, this your refactoring fails, uh, fail the system, you will see, you will know it from acceptance test. But uh, when you are uh, finished with refactoring, you are you have acceptance testing and uh, unit and uh, integration testing working all together. Um, so uh, yes, but how do we tell the, the testing is important to our management? Um, yes, we need to say that we are not doing. Uh, and quality stuff. We are doing everything for good. Uh, we need to talk that uh, our price of a fault is much uh, bigger than price of testing. So if the system, if the system uh, has regular changes, if it breaks regularly, and we we can't mm, just uh, blame developers for breaking the system. No, we need some uh, uh, pass belt to. Uh, uh, to ensure that it won't break in out in automatic way, and uh, to um, make the system work uh, for years and uh, improve it constantly, uh, testing is a real need. So they are required. And um, um, okay, manager still didn't understand what is testing and why and how <laughs> does it work. So you just show uh, them this, uh, this or some other screencast. How do the testing work? They, they do just the same uh, uh, what as what client does. So it's WordPress. <laughs> 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 I didn't I didn't find the Joomla example. <laughs> so, but uh, as you see, uh, it's uh, all this action in browser is not done by user. It's automated test. And uh, ev if a, uh, your a client or manager does this manually. You can say that, hey, you can save some time if I will write a test for you that will execute uh, this just the same action 
and um, we, we can run it every time we need. Uh, so uh, this is really, really visual thing and uh, it works. It uh, doesn't take too much time to set up to write this test. And it takes, it takes much more time to uh, uh, work with it manually. And uh, in the end, uh, the testing is not a thing of the future and it's not uh, the, the something you should try on next year projects. It's uh, the things that you can, you can and you should try today. Because uh, once you stabilize your system, uh, once you, are, uh, you ensure it actually works, uh, you, you just you feel yourself better, or your team, your team feels better when they know that then, uh, they, this, this, this site will work this in its stable to changes, and you can add more and more components in it. Uh, uh, so uh, when you uh, you need to write a better code to help unit tests with it because unit tests are uh, really really important uh, and it's better to uh, uh, work uh, to do your work the way that you could write them so follow the solid principles keys principles and other best practices in development and by doing that you will have unit tests. Uh, for integration and functional tests, the, uh, uh, setting them up will be my, uh, some more harder because uh, we will need database for them. And it, it, you can't uh, do tests on production database. You will need to stop test database. Uh, you, you should assure that uh, tests won't affect each other with the, by running on the same database. So tests should clean, uh, uh, do the cleaning uh, uh, I should not write to the base or clean, clean up since after it, uh, it has written and need to database. So it's about database management. And acceptance tests is about database management and web server and the Selenium and browsers. It requires more and more uh, dependencies. So unit is more concentrated on code and acceptance is concentrated more about external uh, services you are using. And it's, uh, it's, you should uh, keep in mind that there is pros and cons of all these approaches, but they all should work together to make sure that everything is stable. Uh, so th that's it. Uh, when I said everything, I meant uh, 90 persons because uh, your deploy script may be suck as well, and you, the site will be broken not because you didn't test it, but because you have broken deploy script or, or something with your server or <laughs> something else. But 90 percent of everything uh, is covered by automated tests. So thank you. some questions. Or was it too general? Maybe I, I should put some examples. Okay, I, uh, I can take some suggestions from my next talk. Uh, if you have a really big question, just uh, tell what you want to hear. Well, because I, I'll be giving talk on Sunday. Okay, it's not really a question. I just want to comment that uh, it's because of conception that I started really doing testing. So, uh, thank you very much for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, very briefly, you mentioned GitLab. Yeah. I just wanted to share that my experience with GitLab CI uh, and conception has been really great because it's really like, it's almost like you press a button with your complete testing environment. They use Docker internally to spin up the conception image with everything ready in it. So it's really, really, really simple. Well, I, I didn't know that it used Docker internally. It does. So oh. it's great for people to share with you. Yeah, I thought about this. I've seen the new GitLab setup with conception. Yes. yes, and it looks uh, as nice as Travis. It's not as configurable. I don't have this so much. But I, I know the fact that I've been using it. It's really a snap to get. You know, full chain going very, very, very simple. So you said after all you can have, or you set up a container in the first place too. Okay, well, basically you don't. <coughs> yeah, you do what you do is you have to install, you have a runner that runs two tests. So you've got like a GitLab instance, and you've got a runner machine that runs two tests, and you install some of the GitLab uh, 
a software called, it's called the runner, we install it there, and they talk to each other to make a connection. And then you, uh, in your code repository, you have a github.cryml file, and there you say, I want to use this Docker image. And, and so you can use the code section to make a step of one or a few to do all the Take it from Docker Hub and, and, and they uh, check out the code to be tested. And okay. So it's, it's, really, it's really easy. I will ask you to uh, write uh, all these instructions and in the perception documentation so everyone could use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just started about CI section on the uh, guides and GitLab is not a few of you. Okay, I have pretty extensive documentation in that sense. So do you use two Kubernetes extensions or I have yeah. extensions? Yeah, for my extension, I'm going to be talking about okay. this, I'm going to be conception and, and that. Okay, and maybe some more basic questions. <laughs> or or uh, just questions. Anyone? pretty complicated because PHP adapter for the database is pretty basic. I don't know what uh, what library, uh, what database abstraction is done in Joomla, uh, but I know that frameworks do have active record implementation, they use doctrine and so on. So for uh, this standardized uh, libraries, we can uh, provide some general solution for, for database testing. For um, such um, cases uh, as you have, well, uh, Conception have a database module, which uh, which exact for for database testing. So maybe I will I can show you something. Um, so it provides methods for che checking that uh, there are uh, mm, uh, values in tables, uh, that there is a row with uh, some values and so on, and it pro uh, allows you to. Um, uh, uh, to reload database for each test. It, uh, it is really simple to use, but it's not really fast. And uh, so your un probably the answer to your question is yes, there, there is a module for that in conception. So maybe I'll show it. Uh, so it's, it's conception website. Um, or not? No, it's, it works. Uh, so uh, conception consists of different mo modules, and uh, one, one, when you test a uh, project, you should uh, you can pick several of them. For instance, uh, yes, you are dealing with database. You are doing uh, database testing. Then. Uh, you don't need to uh, write all this database stuff for, for your own. Uh, you just include this DB module, and uh, it uh, allows you to uh, uh, use this m method like I have in, in database. So 
this module inserts in the uh, table users this uh, the row with um, name and with, with values you provide. There is an assertion I see in database where you test that uh, user with provided values uh, do exist. And this is, uh, and you, you can combine it with uh, acceptance testing. So, uh, problem. So, uh, acceptance, typical acceptance scenario. Oh, I simply should. Is no. Uh, so, the simplest acceptance scenario uh, uh, looks like this in conception. Uh, if you remove uh, all the special symbols of PHP, uh, even your manager can read it. I'm on page, I feel field, I click on it, I see well. So, uh, yeah, we can extend this scenario something like. Uh, I want to re uh, register on site, uh, I'm on page regi register, I feel fields just the same way, I click submit, I see welcome dart and I see in database uh, users uh, name dart is, is, is that uh, this record was saved to database. So it's really uh, easy to add uh, uh, new testing stuff into a scenario. Um, so uh, we can run it uh, as PHP browser, so to emulate, emulate browser or uh, do browser testing. So it's really, um, it can deal with forms pretty easily. Uh, um, so I, I, I think this, this was, yes, about dealing with database. So uh, you include database DB module and it will clean up database after each acceptance test and uh, reload SQL dump which you provided. Uh, so just to repeat it again, if you don't know where to start, start with acceptance testing. Just download conception, try simple scenarios, maybe use PHP browser, and once you are sure that some basic functionality like, like login, register and so on works, you can go to next steps. What do you think is the best way uh, to use identifiers in systems? So, for example, I click new. The problem is when new changes or we do multi language, whatever. Yes, it, it depends. Yes, if you are doing uh, multi language, well, we can mm, test it in one language. That's a, a good solution. Uh, you can uh, uh, use uh, some special names for these fields. So, um, Would you say um, IDs or classes are better yes. than text in uh, general? Uh, in general, so it may be. I, I, I'm not sure because if you are if you change design regularly, then you will get, it's get to the same case. Probably you can have special classes which are will be used only for testing. So you say all classes prefixes with LC are just for testing, and the designer don't touch it. Yes. This how it will work. What's your thought on page objects that the sign pattern? Which uh, is so um, you have to do lots of tests and they you uh, use the same functionality. You should move that functionality to page objects. So it's nothing really special about it. It's just how you factor code in a regular way. So if you do development, you don't copy past past your code. You you just have one class which is included into another which uses it. And page object is just the same part. So if you were just doing first simple uh, tests, don't use page object. But when you have lots of tests, probably there is some stuff you should not do it. Okay, so I have one question, but maybe we uh, what if you want to test different versions of a software? For example, we want to test Joomla 2.5, Joomla 3, and Joomla 4, and we want to recycle the, the most of the work that we have done for testing the first version. Yeah, test, uh, test should live with code base. So for Joomla 1.5, you should have the its tests. For Joomla 1.7, its tests. And I, I see no problems with it. So when you do changes to Joomla 1 to 2.5, all its tests will be executed and uh, it, it won't touch the test for Joomla 2.7. So separated. Yes, it's separated. But the, the thing is that the Joomla 14 
wants to reuse what we have in Joomla 3 to make sure that they don't break anything while doing Joomla 4. So how can we recycle or how can... Uh, try to one by one copy <laughs> 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 Okay, so what, what about time? Thank you.